Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Airport Safety Channel. I am your host, Isaac Otu, and it is a privilege to have you for today's presentation. How well do you know your airport facility? We are still treating various physical characteristics of the airport facility. Our main reference is the Annex 14 Volume 1, Aerodromes, 9th Edition, and other CAA and airport documentation. Currently, we are learning about taxiway minimum separation distances. Don't forget to click the subscribe button if you have not subscribed already. Also, click the bell, like and share with friends and colleagues to also learn on this platform. As previously mentioned, Annex 14 has outlined the minimum separation distances required for all situations. However, when applying these standards, one must know the code letter of the critical aircraft, that is code A, B, C, D, or E. Also, the code number of runways is required for runway separation distances. If you have a challenge with the codes, refer to my video lecture 7. The code of an aircraft on taxiways gives a clue on the maximum wingspan of the aircraft. Remember that the main aim of taxiway separation is to provide enough space to accommodate the aircraft wingspan. Also, the minimum separation distances provided by Annex 14 is broken down into the various categories that we just looked at. That is, taxiway center line to runway center line, taxiway center line to another taxiway center line, or to object or aircraft stand taxi lane to another aircraft stand taxi lane, or aircraft stand taxi lane center line to object. These are all broken down depending on the code letter of the aircraft or the runway in use. So, now let's look at taxiway center line to taxiway center line minimum separation distances. Unlike runways where the code numbers are used, taxiway to taxiway center line separation requires reference only to the aircraft code letter. These letters project the maximum wingspan of the critical aircraft for which the taxiway has been designed. So, for this particular situation, our main aim is to ensure that the minimum separation is achieved between the wing tips of aircraft operating on the taxiway and also the adjacent or parallel taxiway. It is very important to ensure that these minimum distances are maintained to prevent wing tip collision. Our table 3.1 will also provide us with the data required. Therefore, for a code A aircraft operating on the runway or on the taxiway, aircraft operating on the taxiway, you will have a separation distance of 23 meters. If it is a code B aircraft, you will have a separation distance of 32 meters minimum. Code C aircraft, you will have separation distance of 44 meters minimum. Code D aircraft, you will have separation distance of 63 meters minimum. Code E provides 76 meters and code F requires 91 meters separation minimum between the center lines of the parallel taxi wings. You observe that for taxiway 
center line to taxiway center line, it is not as cumbersome as compared to the taxiway and runway separation because these ones are straightforward. This version is easier to determine from table 3.1. Let's look at taxiways except stand taxi lane to object minimum separation distances. For this type of separation, it highlights the minimum separation between a taxiway and an object. Example is a service road which is designed to contain an object like vehicles or ground service equipment. The edge of the service road is considered to be the start of the object zone. Therefore, measurements end at road edges. Remember that for runway and taxiway separations, the measurement ranges from the center line to the center line of the other facility. When we are comparing parallel taxiways, the measurement starts from the center line of one taxiway to the center line of another taxiway. But for taxiway to object, where we are using a service road parallel to a taxiway, we measure from the center line of the taxiway to the edge of the service road, not the center line of the service road. We measure to the edge of the service road. Therefore, if you look closely at your screen, see that the measurement starts from the center line of the taxiway and ends at the edge of the service road. So that is, if this vehicle is moving, it remains away or stays away at a distance that ensures good separation between the aircraft wingspan and the service road. In this instance, and using table 3.1, for a code letter a taxiway and a, a taxiway that accommodates code letter A aircraft, the separation distance should be 15.5 meters. For code B, it should be 20 meters. For code C, it should be 26 meters. For code D, it should be 37 meters. Code E, it should be 43.5 meters. And code F, we will have a 51 meter separation. All these values are measured from the center line of the taxiway to the edge of the aircraft. Now let's look at aircraft stand to aircraft stand taxi lane minimum separation distances. Now, if you don't know what an aircraft stand taxi lane is, kindly view my previous videos. Taxi lanes are slow moving spots and has lesser separation distance between center lines compared to that of the parallel taxiways where aircraft may be moving at a higher pace. However, due to activities such as pushbacks, enough safety margin must be provided. The minimum separation distance must always be achieved between aircraft stand to another aircraft stand taxi lane that are provided. On your screen, you will see that we have lane A and lane B being used by aircrafts. There are minimum separation distances that must be achieved on these lanes so that aircrafts that are moving do not engage in wind tip collision. Table 3.1 in Annex 14 provides that for lanes that carry code A aircrafts, the minimum separation distance 
between the lanes should be 19.5 meters. For lanes that carry could be aircrafts, the minimum separation should be 28.5 meters. For lanes that are used by could see aircraft, the minimum separation should be 40.5 meters. For D lanes should you should have a minimum separation of 59.5 meters. Code E lanes should have 72.5 meters and code F lanes will have a minimum of 87.5 meter separation between them. On most aircraft stands where we have taxi lanes, the maximum wingspan of aircraft permitted to use that lane is usually written on the ground to help pilots decide whether they can use the lane or not. The next item to consider is the aircraft stand taxi lane to object minimum separation distances. When we mention the word object, it refers to aircrafts, ground service equipment, buildings, and any other item that can interfere the smooth operation of an aircraft on the stand. Taxi lane and object separations are smaller compared to that of the taxiway to other taxiway separations. Can you guess why it is smaller? Write in the comments. The minimum figures are detailed in table 3.1. For table 3.1, it indicates that taxi lane and object separations for a code A aircraft should be 12 meters minimum. For code B, it should be 16.5 meters minimum. For code C, it should be 22.5 meters minimum. For code D, it should be 33.5 meters minimum. Code E should be 40 meters minimum. And code F should be 47.5 meters minimum. These are the minimum distances required or aircraft stand taxi lane to object separation distances. Let's take a look at the layout on your screen and study from the example. You have aircraft stand taxi lanes parallel to each other on the left side of the screen. On the upper portion, you have aircraft stand taxi lane that is adjacent to other aircraft stands. Therefore, if you look on your left, you will see that the minimum separation required for the code of aircraft operating on that taxi lane is 40.5. However, the designers provided up to 44 meters to ensure that maximum clearance is achieved. The distance between aircraft stand and the aircraft taxi lane, the minimum is 22.5 meters, but 24 meters was provided. Remember I mentioned that objects include aircraft therefore the aircraft stand itself is an object area and when measuring separation distances for roads we use the edge of the road therefore the white line you see is the edge of the road where ground service equipment are expected to maneuver they are objects Therefore, the distance between the taxi lane, aircraft stand taxi lane, and the object area should be 22.5 meters, but they provided 24 meters, which is very good. 
Also, if you look at the upper section on your screen, you will observe that the aircraft stand taxi lane is designed for a code E aircraft. Code E aircraft. Therefore, the minimum separation should be 40 meters, but they provided up to 42 meters between objects. Center line of taxi lane to aircraft stand, they provided 42 meters. It is good to always add up to the minimum separation distances in order to guarantee total safety of aircraft on your aerodrome. In summary, remember that separation distances are very important to avoid wingtip collisions and other accidents in your aerodrome. In order to apply the right separation distance, you must refer to the code of aircraft that is operating in the aerodrome or within the area where the minimum separation distance is required. Also, the reference runway reference number is required for runway and taxiway separations. The type of taxiway, that is aircraft stand taxi lane or a taxiway, needs to be verified before the separation distance is decided on. Use the Annex 14 Table 3.1 as adopted by your CAE in determining the minimum separation distances. Consider other factors within the operating environment and also potential future operations before choosing a separation value. Add on to the minimum separation distance if required to enhance safety. Work with your CAA to ensure that you are using the right values to avoid any non-compliance. Thank you for watching. Post your comments and questions. Subscribe and click the bell. Share with one and all and hope you join us in our next presentation.